views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Your journey on the path of freedom starts here. A life untethered with Andrew Martin. Walking the path of freedom is a celebration of those brave spirits who have faced their fears and reclaimed their power. Andrew is dedicated to challenging the old paradigms and setting you on your path to living a life free from limitation. You're about to begin the journey of becoming your higher self in a life untethered. And now, here is your host, Andrew Martin. Hello, everybody. How are you? Happy second Thursday. Here we are already two weeks into September. I cannot believe <laughs> that this year has just flown by. It's such an amazing journey so far. Um, and I just am so happy to be connecting with you today. You are listening to A Life Untethered with Andrew Martin. I am your host, Andrew Martin. And I want to give a shout out to all my friends at Moon Recording in Brooklyn. I may not be with you uh, recording live from your studio any longer, but you guys are still in my heart. Um, if you are ever in need of amazing recording facilities um, in the New York area, check out Moon Recording in um, Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Those guys are incredible. Super cool guys, have an amazing space, super great vibe and energy, um, and I highly recommend them. Um, You know, I am really excited um, to talk about today's topic. Um, The topic of today's show is, is it time to stop being spiritual? Um, And, you know, when I first chose that title for today's episode, I thought, gosh, Andrew, are you being too provocative? Is that like, you know, clickbait? Are you like trying, you know, to sort of get a rise out of people? But I thought, no, I think it's really a fair question to be asked. And I really want to invite a dialogue for today's episode. So if you go to TransformationTalkRadio.com, you will see the embedded player with my face on it. Click on that player and then another page will open up and you will see in the upper right hand corner, there's a little question mark that says ask. You can click there and you can email your question directly to myself, um, and I will answer it or discuss it or bring up your topic or your input um, live on the air, Um, because today's topic is a big one. You know, this is something that I have seen bubbling up within the zeitgeist of the spiritual community for the past couple of months, and myself, um, Katya Turner at IndigoDiaries.com, Matt Kahn at True Divine Nature, my friend Shelly Young at Trinity Esoterics, and um, other people who are, you know, sort of leaders in the spiritual community um, at this point, we're all talking about this idea of moving beyond the spiritual seeking and moving into the place of embodying these things that we know to be true. And the questions that I have begun to live around this topic are, are we stuck in the journey of seeking? Are the labels of spirit and spiritual and spirituality even relevant anymore? Right? There's no doubt that the journey is important, right? The journey is why we're here. But at what point do we stop seeking something outside of us and seeking a, a, you know, a finish line or a gold star or a blue ribbon or an attunement or, you know, a certification or another class or another book or another understanding? And when do we just begin to embody what we know to be true? I am super, super excited to talk about this with you today. My um, guest today is the amazing Jeremy Newdell, who you may remember from my last episode when we talked all about abundance. And I'm super excited to have him back. Welcome, Jeremy. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with all of you. This is such an important topic. I mean, you know, like you said, it's it is kind of a clickbaity thing, but at the same time there's something so real about it. There's something so real about this conversation that we're having. So thank you for having me. I'm, I'm honored and blessed to be here. You are welcome. And I have some exciting news. So for those of you who have been listening to me, I think this is like my fourth or fifth episode, and I have had, I've been running the show by myself. But one of the things, you know, as I'm living this question of how to embody more fully what I know to be true, one of the things that is really exciting for me is the idea of collaboration. And so, Jeremy, I am super excited to announce that you are now going to be my co-host for the remaining episodes of the show. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, you know... <laughs> We, we talked about, you know, you kind of, uh, you informally gave me this news a couple of days ago and it was just so exciting for me. It was so exciting for me. I cannot wait to explore and to see what, uh, you know, see what we 
see, you know, see what we're made of. You know, I, I, I feel like it's not just me, but there's so much power, I feel like, in our dialogue. And I feel like we... Um, we're a power couple, so I it's 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 an it's an honor to to do this. I can't wait, and um, it's just it's going to be amazing. I can't wait to see what happens. I know I'm really excited too, and I think it's really fascinating. You know, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, and one of the most interesting things that I find about um, our connection is that you know you are literally half my age. I'm going to be 46 <laughs> in just a couple of weeks, actually a week and a half, and you were what 23, getting ready to be 24, something around there. Yeah. And so, but you have this level, um, you have this level of awareness and understanding that, it, you know, at 46, I am just beginning to sort of crack open some of the things that you seem to just sort of walk around in. And that's one of the things that I think is so fascinating. And I want to kind of dig into this topic right away. And that's one of the things that I find so fascinating. And I want to kind of get your perspective on this. You know, so many people, my generation and older, We've had to go through this very deep transformational of experience of, you know, the life falling apart and the dark night of the soul and this crazy chaotic period and then the rebirth and the rejuvenation and the healing and the clearing and the, all of this. And it has been a very profound spiritual journey. But your generation seems to just kind of get it. Like, I, and is that an incorrect assumption? I mean, would you say from your perspective of someone who's in, you know, and I don't want to make you the spokesperson for your generation, um, but from your perspective, is that a correct assumption? I mean, you know, I feel like I went through my own sort of, you know, version of, you know, maybe what you went through. You know, we all go through the, sort of the same things in a different way because it's really just archetypes of consciousness and when you're when you're growing and when you're sort of becoming awake to these real truths in consciousness you you sort of have to go through the cycles you have to go through the certain you know there's there's steps and there's and there's and there's things that we have to go through um you know i think that for me it just it just happened and i think this is sort of happening with the newer newer even newer kids that are coming in the newer generations it's just happening a lot faster and 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 not that that's, you know, any better or worse. It's just, you know, we're at a point in history where, and, you know, and not to say that, you know, it, it's happening faster because we're any more special or anything. It's just happening faster because we're kind of dovetailing off of, off of you know, the generations before, you know. So it really is you guys that are sort of, you know, leading the way to, um, to help us sort of get to that level faster. So we're sort of, you know, we're sort of, um, pulling each other and it's, and it's really a dance. It's not so much like a hierarchical structure. That's how I see it. Yeah. And I love that because I think you are right that there do, there do seem to be, and in my work and seeing people go through their spiritual journeys and their awakenings firsthand, there definitely is sort of a pattern to how things unfold in our awareness. And there is sort of a template, so to speak, for lack of a better word, for how an aware awareness or an awakening occurs. But I think that you're right. Part of it is, is that the work that is done by previous generations is, you know, it's sort of building on that foundation. And it also mm-hmm. is that collective consciousness is already in place. Like all of the things that we have been striving so, so hard to embody and to understand as truths, those are now already kicking around in the collective soup. So for someone that comes in like yourself or younger, it's already kind of there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's also energetically, we are going through a profound shift on the planet right now. So things are a lot less dense. So it's easier to access that information. Totally. Yeah. And, I, and it's it's funny too, because... Um, you know, you say that, you know, you're 46 and you, you know, you're, you've been sort of doing this for the, for the last five or six years. And, you know, and in a really real sense, like the last five or six years have been transformative for all of us, you know, Mm -hmm. including myself. So it's not, it's not necessarily like, oh, it happened so much faster for me. I'm this young. It's like, you know, this is, we're, we're all riding you know, I don't want to say the same wave. We're all riding the same wave in our different experience and our different, in our different way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. My friend Ron Head talks about the quote that he uses, um, is a rising tide raises all boats. And I love that idea that, you know, we are in this place where energetically things are moving up in frequency and that is affecting all of us. And the, you know, the thing that really inspired me to sort of begin this questioning and this sort of in, inquiry in my own experience was, you know, you look at all of these archetypal um, myth- mythological her- journeys of the hero and the heroine, you know, and my favorite one is Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. You know, she has that point in her experience where everything goes from black and white 
she all of a sudden has this crazy awakening, this very chaotic experience of the tornado. It lands her in this place that looks unlike anything she's ever seen before. She meets all these crazy characters. All of every, all of a sudden, everything's in bright, vivid technicolor. And she goes on this journey, and she reaches the top of the mountain. She sees the wizard, which could also be the shaman or the healer or the psychic or the whatever. And then he tells her, girl, you've had the ruby slippers on the whole time. Like, you know, spoiler alert, you could have gone home, <laughs> you know, at the beginning of your journey. And so this is my question. Like, what to me, it's really interesting to talk about, okay, what was life like for Dorothy after Oz? Right? Like, yeah. you know, what? Was, because it's the same thing. with uh, Skywalker went, went through the training with Yoda, and what he realized is that the Force was something he carried within him. Same thing with Neo. He woke up and had his whole experience in the Matrix, and what does he realize? He's had the ability to do this the whole time. He just wasn't aware of it. So the journey is important, right? Our awakening is important, but I think the real interesting question is, when do we begin to embody that and just live our life from that place of truth? Right, you know, and it's, and how poetic that, you know, these stories actually exist, you know, because, you know, you think about, okay, well, what happens after, you know, well, yeah, I mean, of course there is, there is an element to that, but at the same time, there was, there's a real structure of why, you know, it had to go through that whole process. And so, you know, for, it, it makes me think of just the archetype of like, you know, the, uh, the shaman or the, or the mystic in the cave versus the, you know, the human, you know, walking around New York city, living his, his everyday life, his or her everyday life. And, you know, what, what the, the process, the, the, the sort of the, the coming of age or the, the hero's journey uh, story is, is sort of doing is it's, it's merging these two together. So by the end of it, it's, it really is like you said, it's, it's a, it's a realization that, <clears throat> You know, like I like to think about it like Hercules, like Hercules, you know, basically discovered that he was a god, but he was this god the whole time, you know. And so the the process is is equally as important as the realization, oh, that, you know, we're awake. We're awake before we even came into this body. You know, we're awake. Our chakras are completely open, you know, um, when we were born. We didn't even know it, you know, but the the process of going through this you know, is sort of what we signed up for. But at this, at a certain point, at a certain point, there gets, there, there, we reach a certain level of consciousness where it stops becoming, okay, I'm in this process. Here's the part of the process that I'm in. And here it is. It's more of, okay, like I've already seen it. I've already seen this. I've already seen this, my higher self. I've already seen this expanded level of consciousness and, now it's time to take that. I, like I've gone to the top of the mountain and I've seen it all, right? I went to the shaman and I saw it all. Now it's time to take that, take that, that, that knowledge, that realization, that, that reference and bring it back into the body and bring it back into the human experience and bring it back into our relationships. Like, you know, bring it back to the grocery store, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, totally. And that, I think that is a perfect setup for our next segment. And I want to talk more about that, you know, um, when we come back from break, we're going to talk more about, you know, is it time to stop being spiritual? And how do we leave the cave of our, in you know, very introspective, very solitary, isolated experience of seeking and make it something that we can embody and move back out into the world at large. You're listening to A Life Untethered with Andrew Martin and my co-host Jeremy Nudell. We'll be right back. This episode is brought to you in part by Moon Recording. Moon Recording is our proud home here to Life Untethered and is located in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. If you have any recording needs, you should definitely check them out. They offer affordable recording services to musicians and podcasters, and their friendly staff specializes in recording everything from full bands to vocals in their vocal production suite. For one hour free, visit moon.nyc and enter code UNTETHERED when booking your first session. Hi, this is Laura Richer, host of On The Verge Radio. Sometimes you hear encouraging messages like transform your life now, become empowered, create the life you crave, and it all seems overwhelming and you're not sure where to start. I'm here to tell you that self-improvement is not always fun and easy, but it is always worth it. The path to creating positive changes begins with releasing the things that have been holding you back. Then you can create a life that inspires you. 
I know this because I've done it. You can find out more about what I do by visiting my website, seattlehealinghypnosis.com. I look forward to supporting you on your journey. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub for Empowerment Radio and learn breakthrough solutions to switch out of survival mode and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. Tune in the first and third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific to Empowerment Radio with host Dr. Friedemann Schaub on Transformation Talk Radio. Visit the fearandanxietysolution.com to learn more. Are you struggling in a relationship and deeply craving some tools and support to get things back on track? Do you crave having a loving, compassionate relationship with Mr. Right, but always seem to pick Mr. Wrong? Well, Sarah Luce can help. She's created a four-week online course starting September 28th that will teach you how to shift your energy and behavior to have new transformative outcomes. And you're going to get a personal one-on-one session with Sarah to ensure you get powerful, personal results. Sign up today at sarahluce.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to A Life Untethered with Andrew Martin. I am Andrew Martin, and my co-host, for the first time ever, is official co-hosting duties, Jeremy Nudell. Um, Are you having a good time? I'm having a blast. (laughs) Awesome. So today we're talking about the, you know, the topic of today's uh, show is, is it time to stop being spiritual? And we are taking our questions. If you go to transformationtalkradio.com, click on the player that you'll see my face on. Um, It'll open up a a little embedded player and you'll see in the upper right hand corner, there's a little box that says ask, click on that and you can email us a question. And we have our first question. So Vivian from New York wrote in and she says, there's a part of me that isn't sure how to stop being spiritual. I find it hard to remate to normal life. And in fact, I'm kind of afraid of going back into my ego. And I think that that's a pretty valid fear. I think that, you know, we all sort of have that battle with the ego when we, you know, I think at some point we start to almost kind of fear the ego. Um, so what do you think about that? I mean, what do you, you know, if someone came told, said that to you, like, what's your advice for Vivian or your insight for her? Well, you know, the first thing that I want to say is that it's not that we should stop being spiritual. Like when we, t- when we say spiritual, we're really talking about this existential type of thing. So it's when, when we say stop being spiritual, we're really talking about it in like the, the categorical kind of way. We're talking about it in like the way where, you know, like so I just came back from Sedona and it's like, that's what I think about when you, it's like the epitome of, of you know, spirituality in quotes, right? Yeah. And so we're not really talking about, you know, stop being existentially aware and, and, and here and I am. It's more, it's more about this idea of not leading with your spirituality, right? So it's like, you know, you go into a public setting and, you know, it's like the first thing that, you know, comes out of your mouth is, is talking about all these spiritual truths. And that's beautiful. But it's like sometimes there's kind of there's there's a there's a lack of, of really feeling and following the energy when it's just like, you know, this is, I I am spiritual and here's all of the, you know, here's all the stuff that, you know, know, and and in in the right settings when, you know, when it feels safe and comfortable, that's beautiful. And, and, you know, obviously we're we're all going to have friends and um, communities that really reflect and help us dive deeper into these, into these things. But like, so I think the grocery store is a perfect example. You know, when we're, when we're in the grocery store and, you know, uh, you know, we're wearing our mala beads and our, and our, whatever, all that stuff. And that's beautiful. That's great. I wear my mala beads every day. Um, (laughs) but you know, it's, it it gets to a certain point where when we're leading with, you know, like when we're, when we're, you know, we're not just walking, we're elegantly like prancing through the (laughs) halls and or through the aisles, you know? And, And it's, and it's almost like we have like this, I am spiritual, like tattooed on our forehead and, you know, it can, it just, it can get to a point where there's a lack of, of authenticity to, you know, where it's, it's like, you know, it's kind of, a, you're sectoring yourself off. So yeah. what I, Being, I, mean, I, I didn't yeah. start to interrupt, but I, I, I totally feel you and I feel the same thing. And I think that to just echo your point of like, we're not saying stop being spiritual, but this idea that somehow spirituality is an abstract thing that you do or you be, or that you acquire, everything is spiritual. Mm -hmm. you are spirit in human form. You are the way that spirit knows itself as Jeremy or as Andrew or as Bob or as Vivian. So you can't not be spiritual. 
even right. in the deepest, darkest, most angry, hateful, spiteful moments of your life, you are still embodying spirit. It's just your choice of how you're engaging with your experience. So, yeah, I think that you're you're right. We sort of use it oftentimes as a way to separate ourselves from the whole mm. and say, well, I am spiritual, so I am over here, and you are not, so you are not spiritual. Right. And there's, and you know, I, I think what that really is rooted in is this sort of deep sense of we want to be, we want to be sort of special and, and we want to be, um, you know, recognized for, you know, how deep we've gone. And that's beautiful and that's lovely. But there's a sense, there's a, sometimes this can lead to a not really being in the body fully because we're so sort of in our spiritual concept, you know, concepts and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, what I would suggest to Vivian, what I would suggest to anyone listening to this is, you know, rather than, rather than, um, you know, going into your life and going into wherever you're going and thinking about, okay, how can I approach this, you know, in the most spiritual way? You know, um, and even you could even go as far as say, how can I approach this in the most masterful way? Because even there's there's a subtle um, there's a subtle sense of like I'm being the best spiritual person I can be. But what I would what I would suggest is that instead of saying that, how can I how can I go into this experience in the most sensual way? Mm. Because when we're talking about sensuality, sensation, we're talking about being in the body and we're talking about feeling the energy. And that is spirituality. That is what that, that we're, we're ta- when we're talking about spirituality, we're talking about it, the existential I am, I exist, I am here. I am here now. That is spirituality. And when we are in the body, and so, um, you know, we're in line at the grocery store and rather than, you know, thinking in the grocery store, like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to say, may you be blessed with this or, you know, or, or, or coming up with this plan of how we can be the most spiritual to prove to ourselves that we are the masters that we've always been, you know, and instead of doing that, just taking a deep breath and just being in the body and feeling everything that you're feeling, whether that be, maybe you're impatient, maybe, you know, you, um, I don't know, maybe you got the wrong type of milk and you're like, should I go back or whatever it is? Like, <laughs> there's, there's this sense of, can I just completely be a, in my sensual experience? And when you do that, there's such grace because now not only are you present, are you here and is it, is it a full sensual experience? You have, like we were talking about before, all of these processes and all of these things that you went through are now sort of able to actually come up because they're not really, they're not being, you know, bogged down and fogged up by all these spiritual pretenses. Now it's like the sensations are opening and everything that you have, you know, have learned and all this kind of stuff is able to sort of come to the surface in the most natural and graceful and elegant way. And then you sort of just behave as a master. You behave as this, as this divine I am presence that's able to transmit your full flavor, your full um, fragrance without even trying. And it's not even, there's, there's no, there's no like, I should do this or I'll do this or whatever. And, you know, it's not that we shouldn't, you know, get in our, you know, get in our minds and say, oh, you know, I want to do this, this and this, because that is all part of it. But at a certain point, it's just sensuality. How much can I be in the senses? Yeah. Yeah. Because (laughs) the the master doesn't need to prove that she is the master. She's just the master. Right. She just is, and she's present. And this is the beautiful thing about it is the eternal infinite consciousness that we are. The eternal infinite consciousness chose itself to incarnate as Andrew for this lifetime so that it could know itself through the experience of Andrew. It is not separate from any of it. I am not separate from any of that. And so that consciousness is always present. So in those mundane moments when I'm standing in the grocery store or I'm doing the laundry or I'm brushing my teeth, that consciousness is always present. That awareness is always present. And I I think you're absolutely right that at some point you just got to get out and you got to live it it's like take you know you can buy all the cookbooks and you can take all the cooking classes you can have a million dollar kitchen and the most expensive knives and the most expensive um you know cooking utensils but if you never actually start to make meals and to share what you know with people and Mm. to you know let it flow through you then what good is all of that right like dorothy can't spend the rest of her life in emerald city At some point, she's got to go back to Oz and live now what she knows, which is she's been wearing those ruby slippers the whole time. The whole time. And what would be the point 
of going through that big hero's journey and that big saga, if not to anchor that energy into the physical reality, into the, into the everyday life. I mean, that's the point. That's the whole reason that we went on that journey so we could discover the master within ourselves so we could anchor the master. We could anchor the energy of our full divine fragrance into this physical experience with our relationships, you know, with our um, whatever patterns that we're into, you know, with um, our everyday sort of things, with our job, you know, so you can yeah. become this divine being within the framework of the, of this life because that's why you're here you're not here to escape you know your this this everyday life you're here to step into it fully step into your senses fully and so you can we can awaken each other and sort of uh dance with each other in this physical reality that's why we're here bingo and i love that because you use the perfect word which is escape and the work that I do as, a, as an energy worker um, and as an intuitive, and I think the work that anybody does, it, this, this work is not, and a spiritual experience is not about escaping your humanness. You came here to be a human. That's why you chose this incarnation. And I see this all the time with people say, oh, but I'm Pleiadian, or oh, I'm a dolphin, or oh, I'm a fairy, or oh, I'm a dragon. And you very well may have aspects of you that are incarnated as those different beings. You very well may have had other lifetimes where you were that, but you are not that now. Now you are a human. And we oftentimes, I think, try to hide in our spiritual experience so that we can avoid being human. And in the next segment, I want to talk about this because we've got another question that we're going to answer in the next one. You know, I think that right now, with so much crazy upheaval in the world, this is the time when we are being called to come out of the cave of the spiritual seeking. We're being called to embody it and carry it with us. And like you said, let the fullness of that fragrance open up because that's the only way we're going to change the world is by showing up present in the truth of who we are and saying, this is what I know to be true, and I'm just going to live it by example, right? By We don't do anybody any good. The spiritual revolution is not going to happen if we're sitting in a circle closed off in our <laughs> spiritual bubble. The only way it's going to happen is if we lead through example. We lead by example. We embody what we know to be true. And the greatest hope is that maybe somebody across the room will look at us and go, wait a minute, how is he doing it? Right. What is she doing? I want to know how to do that for myself. Totally. You know, and we all, it's so funny because, you know, people, a lot of people in the spiritual community, maybe we have friends that are, are just insane with how they live their life. They're, they're almost like these masterful beings that have no idea about any of the spiritual <laughs> stuff, you know? And it's, that is the, those people are your, are your most masterful teachers because even though, you know, there's a certain mechanics that may they, they, um, they may not be aware of. It doesn't matter. You actually don't need to know any of that because it's a certain level of being in the senses. And you don't need to have any type of spiritual pretense to be in your body and to be in the world. Beautiful. Beautiful. We're going to continue this exciting conversation. You're listening to A Life Untethered with Andrew Martin and Jeremy Newdell. We'll be right back. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk Radio. 
Isn't it time to put your health first, to give yourself the gift of whole body wellness? What if embracing unconditional love and self-care was the first step to wellness? Could you honor that for yourself? My name is Audrey Michelle, host of Rewired Life Radio and the author of Rewired Life, A Journey to Untangle Chronic Pain and Endometriosis. In my book, I share how I healed from 17 years of chronic pain and disease. Get your signed copy at AudreyMichelle.com slash book, spelled M-I-C-H-E-L dot com slash book. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Tune in each month to Synergenetic Living Radio, where Rick and Grace Paris discuss the synergenetic way of life, what it means to truly change your perspective in life, what it means to take control of your life and manifest your true desires. For more information on Rick and Grace Paris and Synergenetic Living, check out SynergeneticLiving.com. Get clear on the life you desire and the current life you are creating and what is between the two. Synergenetic Living, living life loud. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to A Life Untethered with Andrew Martin and my new co-host, Jeremy Nudell. You know, every yes. time every time I see your name, Jeremiah, I want to sing Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Um, I know I'm not <laughs> Story the Story of my person. life. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. Uh, today we're talking about this really, really powerful, important... I mean, this topic really could be one that we could expand on forever, but it's this idea of, is it time to stop being spiritual? And, you know, I think that One of the most exciting things that I get to do in this position of having an audience and the the privilege of having an audience is I don't have to show up as an expert. I, you know, I am certainly not here to tell anyone what to do. I am merely reflecting what I know to be true now at this point in my life. Um, And if you are listening and you want to pose a question to us, if you go to transformationtalkradio.com, click on the player, it'll open up a little uh, embedded player for you. And you'll see in the upper right hand corner, there's a little thing that says ask and click on that question mark and you can email us your question. So we've been talking about this idea of, you know, Dorothy and Oz and, you know, um, Luke Skywalker in Star Wars and Neo in the Matrix and Alice in Wonderland and all of these epic heroic journeys where they go to the top of the mountain, they have the big chaotic experience, they go to the top of the mountain, they get the wisdom, which is always some form of you've had it all along. And then they're like, okay, well, now what? And I think that one of the things that we started to talk about in the last segment was the craziness that's in our life right now and in our world right now is calling us to embody this, calling us to come down off the top of the mountain and just live it. And that was one of the questions we got from Danielle. She emailed us and she said that basically she's had this really long experience of this spiritual journey and she's been unemployed. And now all of a sudden she has a job offer that is kind of her old career, and she's sort of like, should I do it? Should I not? I don't know. Is this the right decision? Is this the not? I'm afraid of going back to a career that I'm not fully in love with, but I'm not really sure because then I could bring all the things that I know spiritually with me and bring them to this everyday job. So, you know, she's saying, I'm not asking you guys to make a decision for me, but she's just wanting to know what can we share for people like her who have made it through and now are coming back to that fork in the road, which says, are you going to, you know, proceed down the path of embodying it or are you going to continue on the spiritual journey i don't know what do you think she i mean in that kind of situation what is your perspective jeremy well what i get is that you know danielle whatever whatever is going to be of your highest good is going to unfold no matter what so what what i would what i would say is that i want you to sit with it i want you to just relax into it and whatever the decision that you're going to make and will inevitably make will come to you. It'll come to you and it'll just come to you. And you're just like, oh yeah, this is exactly what it is. And even if it's not this super like, you know, powered full of, of excitement type of energy, it's going to be, yes, this is what, it's going to be a very calm, neutral. Yes, this is what's right for me. And it won't be, it won't be visible until it is. So the, but the, in the context of what we're talking about, there's actually nothing that you have to do. There's nothing that is 
really ordained for you in a sense. So it really is all up to you. But the, the caveat to this whole thing is, again, being in the senses because it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter what you do. It has it actually doesn't matter because what matters is your, your willingness to step into your senses, to be a receiver and to be a transmitter of your fullest self, your fullest fragrance, no matter where you are. It do- actually doesn't even matter where you are. So in your particular case, you're going to know exactly what to do. It's going to come to you. It's not going to be visible until it is, but there is no, no spiritual right answer, right? When, when, we, when we think about it in those terms, we think about it in terms of right and wrong. We think about it, if I do it this way, is this going to be, you know, in my highest best? Am I going to be shooting myself in the foot? That doesn't exist. That doesn't exist because whatever choice that you make, every, uh, the entire universe is going to create this cascade effect. It's going to um, basically serve you on a silver platter exactly what you need based on whatever decision that you made. So it's, it's all conspiring for your highest good, no matter what you do. And when you, when you go about it with that sense where it actually doesn't matter what I do, it's just, it's just this, this sense of being, I am, I exist, I am here. Therefore it comes to me. Therefore I deserve whatever is, is meant for me. Just being in that state of I am, it'll come to you. You'll know exactly what to do. You'll know exactly which direction to take. And it's not going to be like, oh, this is this is the most spiritual route for me. It's going to be, oh, this is, I can feel it. I can, it's a sensation. Oh, this is what this body, this unique flower of consciousness and these, this, you know, unique expression of divinity wants to step into. And that's what they say, you know, follow your heart. You feel this, this, it's a um, momentum. You can feel this sort of, yes, here it's, it's coming. I can feel it. And that, and it just because we don't feel that sometimes, sometimes we get into a place where it's like, oh my God, there, here's all these options. And I don't feel pulled to any particular one of them. That is the time where you're, where you're sort of cultivating the fertile ground for yourself to be in the receptive mode to receive that information. And it's not something you have to do it's a willingness to be in the senses. And that actually happens whether you are deciding to do it or not. That is so beautiful. And I love your use of, of visual language, like the aroma and the blossoming and the senses and the pollination and all of that, the blossoming, yeah, all of that. Pollination. <laughs> <laughs> because it's true. You know, there is no spiritual right way or spiritual wrong way. And let's say playing devil's advocate, you know, uh, for, for Danielle's question, let's say she does make a decision that is, quote, you know, big air quotes around this, the wrong decision. It's about trusting yourself that as the full embodiment of consciousness that you are, and that really this physical vessel is just a thin little shell that we've constructed so that we can put some of that juice in a physical form, but it really is just an eggshell thin, right? It's such a veneer that even if she does make the wrong decision, she can trust that she's going to always redirect herself back to the right road or the right path as if there could be a right or wrong. But I think, you know, you're absolutely right. Like every answer is just a new question mm. because it is an infinite fractal expression. It is only the mind that wants the payoff of the right or the wrong because the soul knows that the payoff is just the journey. Right. The only success, really, when you boil it down, the only success we ever experience in a human form is showing up. Mm. That's the only success there is because the soul knows that it has already won the game just by showing up because all it wants is the journey. Yeah, and and I would even take that a step further where you know the soul doesn't actually care what yep. the hell you do. It really doesn't. <laughs> it really doesn't, you know, it, yep. cause it's here for the experience. So, you know, you could, you could choose to go to Starbucks. You could choose to go to Dunkin'. It doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. You know, it, it's, it's there for the sensation. It's there for the experience. And, and, you know, even further than that, we, you can even get into this, this sense where you don't actually, you, you've done nothing. You've actually done nothing. You've really just been you know, and, and, and you've been watching your body do what it's going to do. And you think it's you, you think it's you who's doing it, but it's not, it's you, or it, you, it's not, it's your body. Your body is just going to do what it's going to do. Your experience is going to do what it's going to do. You're going to be pulled to what you're going to do. Like yesterday I was at, I was in Sedona and, you know, I took a day trip to Sedona and there was, there was this kind of sense of like, okay, like what's next? I'm here, I'm on my little vacation, like what's next? And there wasn't even a sense of, of like, okay, here's what I, you know, I had an idea of what I wanted to do that day, but there wasn't even, 
a sense of like, okay, here's what I'm going to do now because this is what I promised myself I'm going to do. It was just like, what do my senses want me to do? Where, what is, what is pulling me, you know? And, and then when you really look at that, the things that are pulling you aren't really things that you are like consciously aware of, you know, it's not like decisions that, you know, it's like we, this is, this is, I love this analogy where it's like, you think of the little, the little kid on the uh, passenger seat of the car with a little fake steering wheel, you know, and then he turn you know, the, 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 <laughs> the, the driver makes a turn right. And then he turns right. And he thinks that he's controlling the steering wheel, but, but it's really not. It's really, it's really, your soul has this, has this, has this energetic template, right? So it's not like specific things are going to happen in like the, the very, you know, specific, specific way. It's an energetic template that things are unfolding in. And, you know, you're making decisions and you're thinking that it's you because your senses are pulling you in that direction and you go, yes, I choose this. But really, that's why I'm talking about sensation so much because when you really get attuned to your sensual experience, then it becomes so clear that it's like, I don't even know why I'm going to go right, but this just feels like the place I'm, I'm meant to be. You know, and you don't have to know why. You don't have to be briefed on the details. It can right. just be like, I, I am pulled here, therefore I am going this way. Yeah, it's all you, you know, I say this all the time in my work is the only thing you have to do is be willing. That's it. Just show up and follow the impulse. And Matt Kahn talks about, you know, I think in one of his most recent videos, um, because he's been sort of sending out this, you know, this ripple of this idea as well. And he says, you're not on a spiritual journey. Your body is. Yeah. You are spirit. How You can't abstract yourself from the spiritual journey because you are spirit. But the car that you came to drive around in that you call Jeremy or Andrew or, or Danielle or whatever, that is the vehicle that is having the journey. And you're just the little kid in the back seat watching everything that's happening. So just you're, allowing little, yourself yeah. to be present. You're the little kid that's making the turns thinking thinking that it's him driving the car <laughs> and that's beautiful that's part of yeah. the experience and like i said and that that really is the is the perfect uh metaphor for what we were talking about before where it's like you know we, we went through all these processes of awakening and healing and all this kind of stuff and that's really um us you know becoming conscious and being the little kid who's consciously turning the wheel and thinking that it's happening and then we sort of awaken out of that and it's sort of this this idea that it's like wow I'm, I'm really just sitting there and watching it's okay. Here's, here's really the, the, the good analogy is in the old paradigm in order for us to, let's say the old paradigm is like a bicycle and in the old paradigm, we, in order to go to the store, we sit on, we sit on the bicycle, we pedal, 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 pedal effort, 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 try, 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 work, 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 and go and do whatever we need to do. But now in this new paradigm, we, we, go on the, we go to the bicycle, we sit down, we put our hands on the handlebars, and reality just comes to us. And, and the landscape just comes to us. And we're, we're almost just riding down the street, but we're not, even do, we're not even pedaling. We're not even doing anything. It's all just moving right past us. So there's this sense that we are not moving through our lives. Our lives are moving through us. And, yeah. and, that, and in that sense, it's not like here, here, here I am having a relationship with my life and I got to do all the right spiritual things to make sure that I get all the right gifts from the relationship that I have with my life. But rather it's here I am having a relationship with my life and here is reality having a relationship with me and I am not separate from that. It's all the same thing. It's all this passionate, sensual, I am, I exist. Beautiful, beautiful. Man, we are really on a roll here. So we're going to take a quick break. Um, and then something that I want to touch on when we come back is sort of this co-creative dance of the human experience and our awareness of ourselves as a human. And then the bigger perspective of ourselves as something that is larger than our human experience, which I say, you know, the reality of being an infinite being that chose to have a finite experience. So we're going to continue this conversation. Is it time to stop being spiritual? You're listening to A Life Untethered with Andrew Martin and Jeremy Nudell. We'll be right back. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. 
If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit spiritfireretreatcenter.com. Do you ever feel as if you're working twice as hard but only getting half as far? Are you trying to connect with your path in life and finding it elusive? Mainstream Metaphysics Radio is a weekly call-in show where we harness our connection with the universe and use what is in our power to affect change for optimal success and happiness. This hit show bridges the divide between what is and what we do not know. Eve, named one of the country's top psychics, also known as the MBA Psychic, invites you on this journey for this live call-in show with readings, featured guests, leaders, and visionaries in both business and spiritual callings. So join Eve Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com as she takes metaphysics mainstream. For more information about Eve, visit EliteTarot.com. That's EliteTarot.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to A Life Untethered. I'm Andrew Martin, and I'm here with my amazing co-host, Jeremy Nudell. And I can't believe this hour's almost up. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it's gone so fast. So we've been talking about this really, really, like, juicy, meaty topic of um, is it time to stop being spiritual? And if you've been following our conversation thus far, we're really saying is it's not about stopping anything. It's just about getting to the point now where we're at this level of embodying it. It's not about this abstract existential external journey of seeking. It's about now, how do I take what I know and live it? Um, my friend uh, Shelley from uh, Trinity Esoterics, she channels Archangel Gabriel, and she was talking about how, you know, he was saying it's moving from the initiate phase to the actuate phase, right? So you don't think about it or learn it anymore. Now you're actually doing it and being it. Um, but I think there's an important thing that I want to talk about is this idea of personal preference and this co-creative dance that we are in with all the spiritual self that we are. The whole self is what I've started calling it. Um, and then the version of myself that shows up as Andrew. And, you know, Paul Selig, um, in his work, his guides say, you know, it's important to know whose shoes you're putting on in the morning, right? It's important to know, do I like chocolate or do I like vanilla? So preference and decision and desire is part of it. It's not about just sitting here waiting for things to happen. But it is this like, okay, like, you know, when we were talking about Danielle earlier, she's saying, do I want this job or do I not want this job? Which thing should I choose? Choose whichever one feels like the interesting choice. And then just see what happens. Yeah, and you can't go wrong. Yeah. You just decide. And so I think that, you know, oftentimes people from, you know, from the outside, and again, here we go putting it in boxes, but people who we perceive as having a non-spiritual perspective or they look into the spiritual community and say, well, what are you guys doing? You're just being passive and sitting around. You know, you got to take action. Yeah, but that action needs to be something that you're moved towards, right? When you're saying like, follow the energy and follow the fragrance and the, and the excitement and the joy of it and the curiosity about it, that's where you make a choice from. It's not right. about deciding that I'm going to choose this thing because it's the spiritual way and the right way. And this is what's going to give me the payoff. I think a really important thing to add here is that um, at the deepest level, at the deepest level, you as the I am, don't really choose anything. You really don't. It's, it's, it's more of a sense of the sensual experience chooses it for you in a sense. And, and it's not that we're separate from that, but it can almost be relieving to, to feel into that because it's not like I have to go and make things happen or I have to go and choose this over another thing. It's, it doesn't matter because my senses are moving me into whatever is right for me. So at a certain level, you're actually not choosing because there's a sensation to it. There's a sense of like, 
like, here it is. Here's what feels exciting. Did I choose it? Not really. It just, this is what feels exciting, you know? Totally. And what you're, when you're talking about this, what it makes me think of is I was a makeup artist for years and I used to train other makeup artists. Um, I was a makeup artist trainer. And when I would get someone in the initiate phase, a new makeup artist, they were so excited and they wanted to use every single color in the color box and they wanted to, and their makeups would be a mess. Every single time they would go crazy and their creation was chaotic and discord, discordant and disjointed and it was a mess. But it was their joy of just creating. But at, over time, as they would reach this place of mastery and you to look at anybody who's an artist who's at the top of their game and what do they consistently say? I didn't choose this. It came through me. Mm. I'm just the one that's translating it. I chose this color because it just felt like the right color. It called to me. It said, no, pick me. And yes. so I think that that's a great way to look at it is the, the creation. And this is what I say all the time. The life that you came here to live already knows exactly what it is. You do yes. not have to decide. You do not have to do. You do not have to create or make it. You just have to let itself reveal it to you. And as it reveals itself to you, that's where the choices come in. Because then you say, yeah, I was inspired to take this color or I was inspired to take this job. It just felt like the right thing. And so I said yes to it. So really, the only thing we're ever really doing is are we saying yes or are we saying no? Right. Like, am I and allowing it, or not? Right. And it's funny because we can get into these into these structures, right? In the spiritual community, we can get into these structures where it's like um, – Oh, I should like, I think meditation is a perfect example because we can be like, oh, I should meditate every single day for however long, because then I will be spiritual or then I will be in the right place to receive what I've always meant to get. And at a certain point, like for me, for example, um, personally speaking, like, you know, meditation for me is not like a med like a meditation. It's not, it's really just like, okay, here's some time that I just need to sit and chill and be with myself. Maybe I have a meditation cushion, but like, that's not, I, that's irrelevant. You know, it's, it's, I, I just want to sit and be here. I am, you know, there's a certain level of humanness that comes along with that, you know, rather than, oh, I need to do my spiritual practice every day so I can prove to myself that I'm spiritual. Right. You know, so, right. so as if someone's that, keeping yeah. score. Right. And in that sense, it's like, you know, that's that's why I keep talking about your senses because you're gonna get into, you know you're gonna wake up and you're just gonna feel like you know today just doesn't feel like the day I don't feel like I'm called to meditate I don't feel like I'm called to sit and be still and that is okay that's there's nothing wrong with that and and the and the most graceful thing about that is when you do wake up and you feel like oh my god I would just, I just want to sit and just just like totally feel into all this stuff that's going on in my life and you're like excited about that. That is when, you know, quote unquote meditation is powerful. That's when it's going to be really of benefit to you. But I will say that, you know, if you are in a place where it's like, nope, I got to meditate, I got to do my spiritual practices every single day, you're going to hit a wall. You're going to hit a wall and that is going to be the most beautiful and worst day of your life. It's going to be <laughs> amazing. You know, it's going to not be fun, but it's going to be amazing because you're going to be like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm literally working on being spiritual when, when being spiritual is literally just, I am, that's all that's ever required of me is I am, I exist, I am here. That's it. That's all you, anyone has ever asked you to be, you know, yeah. and no one's ever asked you to be, you know what I mean? Cause they, no one can ask you to exist because you are, you're here. Totally. Totally. And then it becomes the, the joy of the deciding what you want to do as the human self. What choice do you want to make today? You know, you're the avatar in the video game. And we had someone, we don't have a lot of time left, so we can't dig too deep into that. But that Jim Carrey video that recently surfaced where he was at Fashion Week and E, I think it was E Entertainment, interviewed him. And he was like, we don't, we aren't real. This doesn't exist. This is a joke. None of it's real. I'm just an avatar, blah, blah, blah. And then he, there was a, um, an article that he also um, had an interview that I just read this morning with W Magazine, I think it was. And he was saying, you know, they were like, talk more about this. What are you talking Talking about, you know, they were like, you're wearing this Tom Ford leather jacket, this, you know, multi thousand dollar probably um, <laughs> leather jacket. So what does that mean? How do you reconcile the two? And he's like, I'm an avatar in a video game. And I had some points that I got to use for a Tom Ford leather jacket. So that's what I use. He's like, and I get other points to use for other things. So it's like, we, it's not about saying that this experience isn't real. It's just there's capital T truth. And there's little t truth. And capital T truth is if something is true, it is always true. And if it's it's little t truth. It's not always true. And the little t truth is I am Andrew because I'm not always Andrew. So it's not real in the sense that it's eternal, but I came here to have the experience of being a human. So that's what I get to do is experience all of it. And what would happen if I chose this? What would happen if I did this? What would happen if I said yes to that? And at some point you realize 
I'm going to stop deciding and I'm just going to flow and choose what, you know, what I posted the other day on my Facebook was seek what is present. Just seek what is present. Stop looking for it outside of you and let whatever's within you open up and show you what it is and then decide what you want to do. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I haven't seen that video. I love Jim Carrey, but you know, there's this, um, there's a sort of, you know, and again, this is, this, this is sort of the, this is the processes that we've all needed to go through. Where it's like, I am, you know, I am not this, this is an illusion. You know, I am not, you know, I am that I am, I, all these things. But what, what that's sort of doing in a very subtle sense is it's sort of giving us an excuse. It's sort of justifying not fully being in the body because if you, if you know that you are this avatar, you know, you are this divine being that's living in this human experience and that's something that you know, then, but okay, so you are this divine being, you are having this experience, but guess what? You are here. You are actually here having the experience. So it's not really going to help you at a certain point to just say, oh, I am not this. I am not the body. I am, you know, what is, what we are all really stepping into now is this sense of, Yes, we have all of these gnarly, crazy, um, you know, expanded spiritual truths, but can I take that and then step back into the body and step back into my experience? And when you do that, there's such a level of humility. There's such a level of grace where it's not, you know, there's no hierarchy. There's not like, you know, I am this, I am this, you know, divine being and look at all of these lesser beings that don't know what's going on. You see it as, as a, you know, that, we that, that even like I said, even the people, even even the friends that you have that don't know, have any idea what's going on, they are still living out their divine br- blueprint, and they have, they don't even know it. And so there's a level of humility, and there's a level of you know I can still learn so much from someone that sometimes even more I can learn so much from someone that doesn't have all of these spiritual things, you know, because totally. there's a, there's a sense of this is we're human. There's a humanity. That's why. I, we, we you, you and I always talk about divinely human and, and being the divine human because it's the amalgamation of the of both of them. Like I'm here sitting under a tree, you know, on the grass, and, and there's a level of being human here. There's a level of being I am on earth and revering in that and being awed by that. You've been listening to A Life Untethered with Andrew Martin, walking the path of freedom. Continue on your path by visiting Andrew's site at thelightedones.com. There, you'll find tools and services to support you on your journey of expansion and evolution. If you missed any part of this show, while you were there, you can also download the podcast. Tune in live every second and fourth Thursday at 12 p.m. Pacific for A Life Untethered with Andrew Martin.